Hello, Teresa here from All Sewn Up. Um, this is strictly off the cuff today. It's something that I'm going to do. It's a private project I'm going to do. But I thought, well, while I'm doing this, um, I'll just video it and it might appeal to some of you. It's going to be very quick, to the point, quick and sharp. Um, but as many of you know, I say, oh, it's not going to be a long project. Um, and then it goes on for an hour and a half. But I promise it, I'm going to keep this as short and as quick as possible. Um, an it's idea of what to do with all of those greetings cards that we get. My son sent this to me um, for Mother's Day. And it's really, really pretty. Now, I've already lifted off the lettering. And as you can see, it says Happy Mother's Day. So I'm going to put that to one side because <laughs> this sounds awful, doesn't it, to those of you who keep all your children's cards and everything, which I do, but um, I also <laughs> like to chop them up. So, um, but my children know what I'm like and I don't mean anything by it. But anyway, but, um, this is the picture on the front. It's a painting, from a painting. As you can see, the white bits here are where these were stuck down and I had to prise them off but that doesn't matter because it blends in with the background but they'll probably be covered up the stitches we're going to use are from our uh, newly made stitch books and for the new subbies and there's quite a few of you I'll put a link or I'll flash it across the screen where you can find this we're going to use all the stitches that are in our stitch book that we made. Um, I think we'll probably use, yeah, maybe a, a three of them at least, three of them. Starting with my favourite, which is this one. The buttonhole stitch, the pinwheel. It's not buttonhole stitch, I shouldn't have said that. It's actually blanket stitch, pinwheels. So this is the first stitch we're going to use. Now, for those of you who are new, I'm going to very, very briefly do a demonstration just to let you see how this stitch is done. Now, as always, I'm doing, I'm exaggerating it just for the camera. So, thick needle and the wool on Hessian only so you can see it. I wouldn't do this on there for obvious reasons. Now, I'm going to knot it nice like that. Now, when you do this on your own work, you might want to draw around something um, in pencil or pen on the back as long as it's not going to be washed. Because if you use pen on this, it might bleed and it might run into your fabric when it's wet. So I advise not to use pen. I'm just going to do this just without a template because these are going to be our templates. The flowers here. So we really don't need to worry about circles and shapes at the moment. But this is how you do the pinwheel. So in, now this would be the edge, in at the edge, and then we're going to, in the imaginary middle here, I'm, right, let's just turn that round slightly, in there. Now keep that thread down there. And you're going to bring this out as long as you want it. So that is the first spoke. And we're going to pull it. Still holding this thread down with your thumb. Pull it, but not too tightly. If you pull it too tightly, you'll crease the fabric up. So that is your first spoke of the pinwheel. Then you're going to go back into the center. Now space it where you want it. You might want this right at the side or you might want it spaced. So we're going to pull it again. There we go and that's the second spoke. And again and we're going to do this all the way round until you close up the shape. 
it up now. Now this okay. is blanket stitch and it is not buttonhole stitch. I always stress this because I had a bad teaching experience. I was teaching this, I was a young uh, student teacher and I was teaching this, oh god it was awful, it was a terrible lesson. Um, just it, oh, in those days it was so dry and I was teaching this stitch and I called it buttonhole stitch and in front of a class of about 30, 12, 13 year olds um, the class teacher who was observing said no, no, no sort of stupid girl to me, to me um, that is not buttonhole stitch that is blanket stitch buttonhole stitch has a twist, it's a figure of eight. She was right, of course, and I never made that mistake again. It was very embarrassing, I was only about 19. But anyway, so this would go all the way around there and close that up. So that is our first stitch that we're going to use. Get that out of the way. Now, I've already threaded a needle here. Now, I've very, very loosely knotted this. It's just a, a very loose knot here and that is so it can be undone later on because this, we don't want a lot of knots on here because it's going to make the inside very, very bumpy. Now at this stage I'm not sure what, I'm, I have an idea why I'm doing this, what I'm going to do with it, but I'm not going to commit to that idea at the moment, <laughs> because as you know, it's a work in progress, and sometimes I start off with one idea, and it completely changes. So this is just the inspiration for our design, the di design's all there, this is just the inspiration. Now I'm going to start here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the colours of the thread the same as they are on here. So blue to blue, red to red, yellow to yellow and so on. Now what I failed to say, these sort of little projects, they're good, they're good exercises in, um, in stitching. Um, they're good exercises in mindfulness because you don't have to actually think a great deal about placement and about technique as long as you have your stitch and you can sit and practice your mindfulness it's very good for all sorts of things but it's also good for using up all these bits and pieces you know all these bits that we get these are tidy I do have an absolute bundle of spaghetti of um, threads but they're really good for using up all these odds and ends which I'm doing now. I'm using this double, six strands double in a nice long pointed needle. Now you need a pointed needle to go through the card. Um, where shall I start? I'm going to start with this one here. So I'm going to go in here and I, I'd actually made the first hole before I had this brainwave and thought, I know what, I should just just film this because some of you might be interested in doing this yourself with your your greetings cards. So there we go. Now right in in here. Now I'm not going to space these very close together because I actually want the painting to peep through the stitching. So there's the next one. All the way around. Hold the thread down. into the center turn it round now this is where it gets difficult when you have a long part here of where to hold where to hold it so it might get just a little bit awkward here 
back into the center there. Right, now that one's done. I'm going to take it through the back and just loop it. Don't want it too thick at the back. And don't worry about how your, the inside of your card will look with your sewing because we will cover what that up. Is, don't have what? big chunky knots because the knots will cause a bump. If you imagine that we were going to cover the back with this, it will be very, very bumpy through your fabric. So that is the first one. Now I'm going to carry on and I'm going to do the others the same. <laughs> I think. I think. Watch this space and uh, we'll see how far I get and then we can start thinking about doing what stitch to do these in. Have a rough idea at the moment and if you did do the stitch book or the stitch journal, I call it a book but it's actually a journal because we have spaces here to make notes and to do some writing. If you did do this, hook it out because we will be using it. So, this is how far I am at the moment. I've put in the pinwheels around here and here and some around here. This thread is actually strands of this. You remember how I did the pinwheel on the back of it here? Well I thought, oh that's really that's really nice. So I stranded that and I've used that that lovely textured thread for there. Now some of these aren't finished yet. I think those with the big gaps like here I might go back at the end and fill some of them in with something else. Um, at the moment it's giving us a little bit of contrast between the spokes that are close together and those that are wide apart. So I'm just going to see how it goes. Now I've already started on the stalks here, or the stems here, and I've done those, or I'm going to do them, in herringbone stitch. Herringbone and chain. This is a herringbone. Um, I might do some chain on some other green areas, but at the moment I'm just concentrating on the herringbone. Now once again the herringbone is in our book here and it's actually my favourite stitch. Well I say that about a lot of them but I really do like this stitch. It's um, You can do all sorts of wonderful things with it. So herringbone here. Now I'm just very very quickly going to show you how to do the herringbone and it is it is so easy, just a lovely stitch. So, knot in the back. Now, not not too thick in the card because of the bumps, and we're going to have to take some of them out as well. So, into the back of your fabric or the card. So, you're going to come out the front. Imagine this is the card. I knew that would happen. I just knew that would happen. <laughs> that was my phone. Right, so in from the back. Then you hold it down like we did with the first stitch. Now, it's up to you how wide you make this. You might want a great big stitch over here. Or you might want a teeny weeny one there. So I'm just going to make a nice big one so you can see it on the screen. And it's going to be that wide. I want it that wide, so I'm going to put the needle in at the width I want the stitch. So if I want the stitch half an inch, it's going to be half an inch from there to here. Now hold the thread down once again, and then we're going to take it to the length you want it. I want a nice length so you can see it. Now you want to bring your needle out between these two marks here, as long as you want, but between. So you're going to run it down, bring it out there, and there is your first herringbone. 
so we're going to repeat this now and you're going to move it to one side I'm going to bring it over here I want it the same size now when you're doing this as an art you can make these as long and as short and as mixed up as you want but just to show you how to do it properly I'm going to do them the same size so exactly the same way we did them here same width so along here and in want the same length so down there and there you go in bone. Now, right, here's the chain stitch and it actually looks like a chain. In at the beginning of your line, at, your, at the beginning of your stem, as long as you want it, so with your thumb again, keep that thread down and then you go back into the same hole that way and then down. Chain stitch. And, uh, so I will probably use the chain stitch as well on some of these finer stems not sure yet so there we are at the moment and I'm going to carry on with that and, right that's the surface stitchery completed I've deliberately left some of these little areas here and here because I think to do those it would have weakened the card the card is already getting weaker and it's quite well it is a really nice quality strong card you can see that that is really nice so if you do this with a weaker card I think you might be wise to reinforce it with either some more card or paper or do what I've had to do here. I've had to interface it. Now, the sensible thing to do would have been to have interfaced it like I would have done fabric, to have done that before the stitching. But because the card was so thick, I didn't think I needed to do that. So that's as far as I've got. But having said that, I'm not so sure I'm going to get away <laughs> with doing French knots. While I was doing it, I thought some French knots would look nice. But I think with all the manoeuvring and the pulling and the stretching and everything, with the yarn, <coughs> excuse me, I think it might be too much of a strain now on the card so I'm going to spend some time now just looking at it and I might I might just put a few beads on there to give it a lift I need to do something with the centers I just feel they need to be made a feature of and I think I'll probably do that with the beads um, it's a shame because I wanted to use French knots but I'm not going to do that I'll um, I think I dispense with the French knots on this one. So the front is almost finished. I haven't quite finished because I'm going to work this piece on the screen, although I'm not sure you'll be able to see what I'm doing with it. So I'm going to do a big demonstration here. What I've done, um, I've added some beads. Um, I'm going to just going to make that bigger. I'm not sure you can see. Let's see see some beads along here um, where else we've got a row of beads up here um, all the centers have beads in the middle um, and we've got some beads here so I ha really haven't um, put too many beads on there because I think it's going to be decorative enough without overdoing it with beads. So the next thing I did was to weave around some of these pinwheels. Now pinwheels are just ideal for working weaving in between them. And weaving just as you would weave anything at the under and over, under and over. So I've done these big areas here, there, here, there, and a smaller one there. But I don't think I'm going to do the small ones. I'm going to leave those, possibly, um, as a contrast between the woven areas and the planar areas. This one is the next one to do. And that will be maybe the last. I, I might possibly do that one as well here. Um, but I'm going to do this one now. 
Now, the thread I've used is from here. I've stranded this thread. It's a beautiful colour. Parts of it are dotted with red from the red print along there. If you can see on my hands there, parts of it are red and black from the print. Now, I think the texture, um, the texture set against the threads here, the satin, um, the silk, embroidery silk, it's providing a nice contrast and it's making a texture. So that is our, our texture and our contrasting texture, the nice satiny, silky feel of the, the embroidery thread and the rough feel, you can hear that can't you, and the rough feel of the sacking. So all I've done here is a knot, we need a knot, come through the back, at the end, now for this you need, if you can see that I'm, I'm pulling that up, there's quite a lot of holes there so I'm going to have to move up a bit, here, there, now if I had used a big needle like that, when the card is already fragile in places like here I would have totally ripped that at the moment there's a tiny tear there but that's okay that's um that's repairable so I'm going to pull this through um hang on I'm going to make that just a bit bigger again oh unfortunately it's yellow on yellow and all I'm going to do now is go over and under, and over, under, over. What was the last one? The last one was over, under, over, and the last one here is under. So on the return row, because the last one was under, on the return that's going to be over, under, over, and, uh, and this is all you're going to do as many rows as you as you want you might not even want to do it you might want to fill that in totally or just add a couple you might not even want them in neat rows you might want to spread them like that and make shapes it's entirely up to you and then by finishing off all you do is take your needle back through the card and knot it off at the back. Now, in case you didn't see that, I'm just very quickly going to do exactly the same as I've just done there on this one. The last, I've had, I think this might have been the last of our demonstration pieces, I'm not sure. Well, no, it might have been the chain stitch. But anyway, so for demonstration purposes, a nice thick piece of string, nice needle with the big eye knot it so we don't pull it through nice knot and then we're just going to come through from one of the ends in the middle doesn't matter where I can start there right so here we go so the first one is over so the second one is under over under over under. and you can see with a nice long needle you can do that the rounds in one so that is the first row let's neaten that up a bit so the second row because we finished on an under we'll start on an over so I'm going to turn that round just to make it easier so we're, we've finished there on an under so the next one is going to be an over, over, then under, over, under, and pull that, ooh, got a bit caught up there in the mall, straighten that up, there we go, and then last one there was under so the next one is over 
and the last one is under there we go that take two that probably take another one but I'm not going to do that in case it gets caught up again so there we are oops so if I could bring that down a bit there we are and it's easy peasy and then that will go in the back just make sure you don't pull it too tight so into the back and then just finish it off so you can just run it through there I mean it looks very very bulky with the string and obviously you're not going to use string on your card although I've used this which is like string isn't it so let's just pull that into a little bit of shape see this isn't working too well because the wall is quite loose but I think you can get the effect there the under and over and the weaving and that's all I've done on these so as soon as I've finished the weaving here there and there this will be ready then to make up with the card to make up into a little journal type thing okay <laughs> so i'll carry on with that and i'll get back to you very soon and this is it completed now i finished weaving through some of these through those that i wanted to weave through and i've left others i don't feel that there's anything else i can do to that so now it's time to stiffen it up with some card now I'm going to start at the back I've already cut the card it's slightly big but that doesn't matter because I can trim it later um, it's a double-sided card but I like this I think this is really lovely and it goes nicely with all these because when I started this I didn't really know what I was doing with it I was just going to do the front just leave it as it is now finished move on but while I was doing it um, I realized that hey it would make a nice little journal notebook and because I realized that after that I I'd, I'd done the oh I'd almost finished this I hadn't done the prep work that's needed for when you do actually make a journal cover if I'd known at the beginning that I wanted to make a journal I would have made the spine um, strong but because I didn't know what I was doing and it's evolved I'm going to do it this way so I'm going to put the card down and then I'll reinforce it afterwards so the main thing is at the moment to get the card down and you can see this card is just a little bit bigger than it needs to be but that doesn't matter because I will trim it off so I'm going to put the card down there I've got some sticky sided um, double sided sellotape there or sticky tape I should say but I'm not going to use that because <laughs> I've just decided um, that I'm going to machine sew it as well so I don't need um, I don't need to use it, the sticky side of sellotape this will do just nicely thank you right so I'm going to just take it in there and that should be fine and then edge to edge we'll start off with the straight edge here first right I'm not taking it right up to the sewing I'm just leaving it just a, it's just a tiny tiny gap there to leave that there and do you watch all the glue come out now oh not at all all right just quickly move that down edge to edge there smashing now that is that that needs to dry so I'm going to turn that round just a little bit I need a cloth now I need to do this part now I'm going to use exactly the same there 
edge to edge all the way round but first I'm just going to pull these just to make sure these yeah they're quite tight actually so this will now go in there going to do it the same way there we go put some there make sure I get all the knots which I have trimmed actually so I want all the, the um, loose pieces here make sure they that's lovely and then we do this so now this will as the first one like so line it up yeah it's nicely lined up there you can see where it needs to be trimmed all the way around but that's okay now I'm going to flatten this I'm going to let it dry and flatten it so all that is nice and flat I mean it's not going to be too flat there because of the beads so I'm going to give that a couple of hours just to flatten out and dry and then we'll be ready to trim it and think about making up the journal well we need to do a little spine there as well so the card is finished now there we go front and back nicely trimmed I've trimmed it with my shears I did try to trim it trim it with the the uh, paper slicer but um, there was such a narrow bit that needed trimming off it was easier to do it with the shears and here's the inside so that's all nice and neat now the next thing to do is to strengthen the spine now I'm going to do this just with ordinary uh, ribbon it's a nice thick ribbon nice and sturdy I'm going to do it and the front and the back now just before I sew this down along the spine I'm going to pop a little bit of ribbon along here and hold it down just under the spine so all I've done is take a piece of ribbon like that and that's all I have and it's the, the length double the length of the card so I'm going to find halfway and pop that there right side up pop it halfway down and I reckon that's about halfway and then this I'm going to sew down here across right the way either side and across the ribbon now why I'm going to do that is because <clears throat> that will give you right at the end a tie so you could pop this in your bag and it won't undo and it will just you could tie it off how you want okay so the ribbon for the spine has been sewn in place all the way around here all the way around here as well I was able to line up the two lots of ribbon and just sew, sew them together at the same time the front ribbon has gone over the narrow ribbon for the closure so it's quite firm and the whole of the spine now is quite firm and sturdy so the next thing to do is to think about the paper we're going to use for inside now it's, the size is just a regular A4 and all I've done for this particular journal if you like is just collect up sheets of printing paper here because I want this specifically for note making um, I do quite a bit of um, ad hoc sketching when I'm out and I think this is just be nice so this is from the magazine um, I was tempted to leave it all the same old 
or white but I thought I'd just give you an idea as to what you could put in your journal and as I say this is very very basic and it's to suit my needs at the moment but some of these are really really lovely decorative and there's a lot of journal makers on YouTube who make fantastic journals um, this is coffee dyed paper and that seems to be a requirement whether you like it or not in every journal that you ever see anywhere um, more paper this is out of my what I call my paper bin, my paper bin. Um, that was just a little bit of experimental playing about with the holes on a divider um, and what we got here an envelope also obligatory the nice thing about the envelope so this is just an ordinary brown envelope you can fold it and you can, could actually use this as a pocket like so and this way you could use it as a tuck like so like that so I think these are wonderful but obviously another time we would decorate them but this isn't actually the point of the video the point of the video is to use the card a nice greetings card as a journal folder there's something nice for me to look at while I'm sitting on a park bench trying to draw a duck like I did yesterday but the beautiful thing kept moving it was impossible to draw um, so I had my coffee and looked around and, but I will stare at these nice pictures in future um, <clears throat> some postcards there for journaling that's glue this was actually stuck to a box of fudge which I took it off but it's left the glue there which I don't mind because it adds to the rusticness just joined two postcards of two favourite places the Isle of Wight and Rye in Sussex my two, one or two of my favourite places and all that obviously the other half is all in this side of the journal so the next thing to do is to put these together to sew them together now I have done this um, with the pamphlet stitch in the previous uh, in a couple of previous uh, videos I think but this time I'm just going to machine sew it down here now I have two sewing machines and one is a craft sewing machine they're both very very cheap the cheapest sewing machines you can get cheapest brother sewing machines one I use for um, sewing sewing nicely and neatly the other one is what I call my craft sewing machine and it's for jobs like this paper needless to say out of the two they were bought on the same day the one for nice sewing is in pristine condition but the other one um, I've got, got goodness only knows how many um, needles I've got through and it's a mess it's a mess but that one's got history so anyway I'm going to line these up in here with the spine and sew right the way through now it looks to me as if yes it needs trimming it needs trimming so it might have, for some reason I thought that was um, half, half a four but it isn't so I'm going to trim those and then pop them back in the middle and sew them okay so I'm going off to do that now so I just trim these tatty bits off these raggy old bits here just to tidy it up a bit although it really wouldn't matter because um, journals as in junk journals aren't meant to be in pristine condition they're meant to have character and be made with junk and to have a history so that's trimmed off now and this is the finished inside I sewed the paper down I had to take that blue one out because it was too long and if I trimmed it I would have trimmed part of the the stringy end off and oh it just seemed like too much messing around so I took that out I used a long stitch the longest stitch on my sewing machine with a nice sharp 
needle, a nice fine needle, not a denim needle or a thick needle, but just a regular sewing machine um, needle. And that this is the effect. Just a little book for your notes, your shopping, the journaling. And that's you see there's the pocket there. So that can go in the pocket or that can go there like so so um as i said this isn't about how to construct the journal this is just how to use the greetings card but uh, it's quite nice I really, I really do like this yeah, it's very pleased with that so that is the card that is the inside finish now all i've done to actually finish it is to put some corners here just to save the corners from getting dog-eared and tatty so on the front I've used the card from the inside so those are there, are there those two there and on the back I've used a white white one because obviously that won't be seen and I didn't like that so I'm just going to quickly show you how to do these in case you haven't done these before you just need a rectangle piece a nice piece of card and this is um, three just over three inches so it's actually say three and a quarter inches long by one and a half inches wide so all we're going to do is find the center of the paper and you can do that just by gently folding it in half and making a mark there a nice fold where it in the half part and then you bring one side over and you're going to fold it where the half is down to the point so bring the point over from the half mark and crease it and do exactly the same here and you end up with a nice corner protector you could do this in fabric and all sorts of materials and then all I use is a glue stick all the way over there and then just carefully bend it like so and pop it onto the pop it onto the corner here There you are, it fits perfectly and reshape it. Just reshape it, bring you can see that you've got bring the corners in. And there you go. That is the corner protector. So that is how to turn your greet your greetings card into a journal cover or even a picture. You might want to stop at the embroidered picture and frame it you might not want to go to um, carry on and make it into a little bit of a diary or a journal or a notebook whatever you want to call it so you know there are options there for you but I think this is lovely whether I'll use it or not I don't know I can see there I need to trim a few bits off there so I hope you enjoyed that as I say this was just an in between -y, between the bigger projects um, I thought as I was doing it I'll just video it and pop it out there but this isn't the main project that would be a couple of days away yet I'm working on that at the same time so um, one of our quick short sharp projects I've no idea how long this is it was intended to be about 20 minutes but I think um, once again I've, I've um, excelled and exceeded that time limit. So anyway, all take care out there and um, good health to you all. And I'll get back to you within a couple of days with the main project. Okay, so take care everyone. He's saying take care as well. Kath, that's to you. I do know you look forward. Oh, there are. It's four o'clock. Well, it's ten past four, and he's chimed once. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> okay, so take care, everyone. Bye-bye.